What's up everybody, how y'all doing? Uh, as you can see the title of this video, I will be going over the Law of Attraction and talking about it and, you know, giving my thoughts on it in a biblical sense and share with you uh, what the Lord has given me. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to be new to this channel, so if you are new to this channel, uh, I'm a I normally do uh, analysis on cryptocurrencies and I uh, normally you know, I give scriptures and I give my analysis so in this case I want to talk about a subject uh, uh, as we know the law of attraction it's very popular um, in today's society and culture it's the new age movement so to speak and I, I just want to talk about it because a lot of people are being deceived by it and they don't even realize how detrimental it is to their walk with Christ, especially if you are a Christian and you claim to use these methods of the law of attraction. And as a Christian, you shouldn't even be using the law, the law of attraction and actually nobody really should be using it. So that's that. So I do want to uh, talk about it. But before I say anything, I want to say this. Uh, coming out of Proverbs 1 and 7. He says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So I just want to give you guys some instructions that the Lord told me to, to give because I believe that it's time to for Christians to start speaking in truth and not be afraid of the backlash or what's supposed to what we're supposed to be doing in this uh life that we're living and that's exposing the uh, the devil's schemes and you know try to uh put the gospel out there for people to either receive it or not so you have that option to receive what i'm saying or you have that option to uh you know take it take it and take it with a grain of salt and study it for yourself what i'm going to be saying so the other scripture I have is Proverbs 21 and 2. Every way of, of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. So a lot of people that uh, I've been around people that uh, practice the law of attraction and they think it's right, the, the right thing to do. And they'll claim, you know, God as well. And that's false advertising when it comes to walking this Christian walk because uh, when we're walking in Christ, we're supposed to solely depend on him. And so in their eyes, it looks right to them. But in God's eyes, that's not the right thing. So God's looking at your heart and why you're desiring these things. And I'm going to break it down later and with some scripture to show you why the law of attraction is not a thing that Christians should follow or anybody nonetheless. So speaking on, uh, like I was saying before, touching on the subject, I've been around a lot of people in uh, that practice the law of attraction, and it's because uh, a lot of people it's an, an enticing type of ordeal because a lot of people want nice things. People want to attract uh, their finances. They want to attract love. They want to attract uh, anything that their heart desires. But in reality, some things that we desire are not. Uh, you know, is it by the flesh that we are really trying to get these things or is it out of the spirit of God that we want these things? And I'm about to break it down in a minute. But when I was in doing network marketing, I've been around a lot of network marketing companies. They promote this idea that the, of the law of attraction, they make it sound bulletproof. They make it sound something believable. And when you hear it and you see that people have things that you want, yeah, you're going to believe it. Yeah, you're going to be enticed by the idea of the law of attraction because you're like, wow, they have what I want. They just use this method and they, they, they're living this style. Yeah, they put work in, but at the same time, they're using it as a tool to supplement God. And that's where the law of attraction is a no-go for me. You, you're taking God out of the equation and you're putting yourself on a pedestal saying you're your God of your life. You are controlling, you're controlling your life the way you want it to go according to your desires and your flesh and not according to the will of God or what God has in store for you. So 
I'm going to read some stuff about the law of attraction, and then I'm going to read what God had me write. So it says here, simply put, the law of attraction is the ability to attract into our lives whatever we are focusing on. It is believed that regardless of age, nationality, or religious beliefs, we are all susceptible to the laws which govern the universe, including the law of attraction. So that right there is pretty much what the law of attraction is saying. Uh, focusing on what you want, pretty much. Focusing on your desires. Whatever is it that you want, whether it be wealth, relationship, health, uh, you know, and they focus on the positive. They don't focus on negative. So that's what they push in the uh, in the law of attraction mindset. So this is what God tells us to seek. Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. Another one, Colossians 3, 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, I'm talking to Christians now, seek those things which are above where <clears throat> Christ sitteth, or the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. So right there, it's saying, do not focus on the things that are in this world because these things are in this world that are here to distract us from uh, wanting that relationship with God. I'm not saying it's wrong to have nice things. It's not wrong to have nice things. What I'm saying is a lot of people get caught up with the idea that having stuff shows the sign that you're blessed. That's, that does not show that you're blessed just because of what you have. People use that status of I have this, this, and this. And how are you going to tell me something that you don't have, You that I've done something that you haven't done? They use that as a way to show, to, to say they're up here while you're here. And that's the how the people have judgment towards someone saying, uh, saying uh, when I'm when I have something that you don't, people are gonna seek me because I have it, and when they have that attitude, it's reflecting that um, they that they have a a power or authority that you don't have because they have something that you don't. The best way to also say this. Uh, when we read uh, Matthew 6 and 33, when God says here, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, with everything that you have, seek God out no matter what is going on. Like everything that we're, we're, that we desire, seek God about what you want. Seek God about what he wants to put, you know, what he wants to put in your life not your desires because what god has planned for you is better than the things that you have planned for yourself and a lot of people are battling themselves saying okay i want to serve god but this i want this i want to do this for god but i want this and we uh the bible says a uh, double-minded man is unstable in all his ways so you're going to be bouncing back and forth that you're going to be fighting with your flesh I'm going to get to that in, in a bit down the line, but you're going to just be battling yourself on this issue and this topic. Like, why why would you even put yourself in that situation where you're going to go, you're going to you know, try to apply Christian principles and live for God. And then you're going to try to be rebellious and be living according to the, how you want to live and not God's will. You don't even know what what. The stuff that you desire may not even be in God's will. You may be asking for things that will actually be detrimental to your walk, to getting to him and staying in salvation. So you need to look at it with wisdom and discernment. Do the, will this, if I get that car in this house and the woman I want or the man I want or whatever I desire, will that hinder my vision and my thoughts on being focused on God? Because God is supposed to be the first thing you focus on not things of this world, as we already said earlier. Uh, so a lot of people that claim the law of attraction works, there's a reason why the law of attraction works for people. And I'm about to explain it because the way the Lord told me and, you know, put it in my, my head and explained it, I understood it because Ephesians 6 and 12 says this, 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The reason why this law of attraction works is because God gives us uh, a choice to make. But these spiritual things that we fight in higher places, they're using doctrines of devils and seducing spirits to deter us and lead us astray. It's all deception and the trick of the enemy. Yes, it's going to work because it's a form of witchcraft, and I'm about to get into that in a minute. When you're relying on something that's not of God, of course, the devils and the spirits are going to make it look like it's working for your life because you're relying on yourself. You're not relying on God. It's distracting. You're you're supposed to be like this when it comes to focusing on God. When you see something that looks nice, you're going to be peering over. You're like, oh, I like that, Lord. I might, you know, let me just, and you drop that. And now you have this side open and now you you see everything that's over here that you want. So, you got to be careful when you use the law of attraction because it it, it 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 keeps you looking everywhere else but forward and straight on God. So instead of doing that, you know, using the law of attraction, you do, do this. This is what 1 Peter 5 and 6 through 7 says. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. That he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Everything that God has in store for you, and everything that he wants for you, all, everything that you desire, and the things that you know that you want in your heart, pray about it first before you even you know try to get those things because. You cast all your worries and cares upon him. He said, all your care upon him. Not some, all, everything from your financial worries to your relationships, to your health, to uh, whatever it may be in your life that is keeping you down. If even your, uh, your personal inner struggles, whether that be depression, whether that be peace, whether you're lacking joy, whether you're lacking... Uh, whether you have anger issues, whatever the Lord could work on in, in you and build in you, try to focus on the, those things and pray about those things because the enemy is going to try to say, uh, you're, you're depressed because you don't have money. You're depressed because you're not in a relationship. When you should be focusing on the Lord because the, jo the joy of the Lord will be your strength if you really lean on him and lean on his under um, on his, on his understanding and not your own understanding. All right, so here's another one that you could do instead of relying on the law of attraction. Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone, everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh find. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. This is according to his will, not what your desires are. It's according to God's will, what he has in store for you. What is yours is yours. And a lot of people say, okay, well, you know, this person has this. I want that too. But God may not want you to have that because it's going to deter you and be detrimental to your walk and staying focused on him. That's why it's important to have a real prayer life and focus on God and not the desires of the world. All right. Uh, let's see. So let me go ahead and let me read this one for you guys. Let's see. So Romans 8 and 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of of the spirit so or after the things of the spirit okay so here's 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 the here's what where things go wrong with uh people's walk using the law of attraction 
like I said earlier, you're you're fighting, you're wrestling not against you know flesh and blood, but you're you're doing things that is flesh minded. You're desiring things. Excuse me. You're desiring things that are going to be detrimental to your walk. Yeah, like I said before, having things is not bad. Nothing wrong is wrong. Nothing is wrong with having nice things because there's been people in the Bible, Solomon, David, Abraham, the, the, uh, Job. Uh, they all had things, especially they, especially Solomon and uh, Job. They they had things, but their relationship with God was was a strong one, and you could. When you're reading the word, you'll see that even though Job lost everything, he still stayed focused on God. Even though he had everything stripped from him, his things wasn't materialistic as, you know, the law of attraction built in our mind. A lot of people don't get that. And a lot of you guys watching this video may not get that. Y'all still may continue to do what you want to do. And that's that's on you. That's. I just pray that you receive what I have to say today. But don't let that hinder your walk, all right? And here's what the thing that I, I want to really put. Uh, this is when Jesus was tempted by the devil. This, this is the third time that, uh, let me see, where is it at? Let me see. Did I write that down? I have not written that down. Shame on me. Okay, I will say this. I was, I'm going to say this. Because I was saying that uh, the law of attraction is like witchcraft and rebellion. Okay, when you're performing and using the law of attraction, you're focusing on doing what you, you're desiring. You're saying, God, you didn't do what I wanted. You did You know, I'm not going to even take that. I'm going to take matters into my own hands and manipulate things into my favor. So manipulation is a form of witchcraft and rebellion is a form of witchcraft as well. You're rebelling against God when you're using the law of attraction or applying methods of the law of attraction into your life. And I'm going to read this. Uh, first, this is uh, Samuel talking to Saul, to King Saul. Or, King Saul or Saul when he was going to be king. So 1 Samuel 15 23 through 24 for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and the stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord he hath also rejected thee from being king. And this this is what Saul said uh, let me see. No, I don't know that. Yeah, here we go. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. So be careful who's teaching you the law of attraction. You're going to listen to people's voice that have things have. Don't he you he well out of fear he listened to people. Don't let that fear, don't let what people tell you, like, yo, you're not going to be successful in life if you don't apply these methods. That's that's manipulation right there. They're trying to manipulate your feelings into believing a certain thing when God says otherwise. When you have fear of, and you put your fear into uh, listening to other people, you obey other people's voice instead of God's voice. And here's 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 one thing I need to say. I just I got that in my spirit just now. Because God has not given this us the spirit of fear, but he gave us the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So don't let people, you know, push your feelings. Cause if say like this is someone's voice and they pushing me, you want to be firm in your belief in that God's gonna do it. You want to be firm in what God's going to say to you instead of being pushed around and i wanted to i'm trying to find that scripture i guess i did not write it down which is shame on me but i want to say this because the third time when uh jesus was tempted by satan uh 
it was, he was saying to him that he took him up high to you know see the whole land all the land and he said was telling him if he bow down he bows down and you know worships him he will give him all that the same way with the law of attraction you're bowing down to the law of attraction to receive the glory of this world when we're not supposed to be focused on the glory of this world but the things above when you are when you bow down to that you're pretty much saying lord i i i submit to these these things because you have not you don't have that patience to wait on God to do what he promised you. Or you may not even know what God promised you because you're not in your word enough to even know what he's promised you. So I did want to say that because a lot of people need to hear this word, especially when it comes to the law of attraction. I know a lot of people, it's the new thing that's been going on, uh, especially in network marketing. Net From network marketing to, you know, big uh, what's it called big people that are, are influential that motivational speakers use the law of attraction they say this this and this about it uh it's sad because a lot of people are going to be deceived by that because they believe oh they have what i want they have like i said it comes down to having what you want uh whatever is uh you know someone wants something from somebody they're gonna look they're going to come to somebody first that has what they desire. They're not going to go to somebody for advice that doesn't have what they want. That's just how the world is programmed. And you got to renew your mind, get that renewing of your mind so you don't fall under those things, that's that deception that the enemy is trying to put over you. So that's the video that I want to put out. I hope you guys understand the magnitude of this. If you are using the law of attraction now, uh, I pray and I ask you repent. It's not too late to stop. Uh, repent and turn away from it. Don't use it no more. Don't even apply it. Don't even think. Of, don't even like. Just ask God to direct your path. He said, "Acknowledge me in all thy ways, and He shall direct your path." So definitely look into uh, you know reading the Word more and getting an understanding for yourself because a lot of people. I don't want no one to be deceived because these times a lot of people are straying from the faith and doing what pleases them and going to doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. And it's very apparent in today's new age movement, the route that we're going with the world. I just pray y'all, you know, stay focused and stay vigilant. And if you're a Christian using it, I pray you repent and get it right with God and continue to move forward. But I love you guys. I hope you guys stay blessed and encouraged and stay tuned for whatever the Lord's going to have me to say next because I, I really don't know at this point because I, I was meaning to do this video some time ago, but it came back into my spirit. So I definitely wanted to get this video made and done. So I hope this, guy, hope this video blessed a lot of you guys and stay tuned for whatever the Lord has me to say. All right. God bless you guys. Love you guys and stay tuned. Peace.